What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to a recap. I was going away from work. I was in California shooting a lot of stuff that y'all will see soon. And it's just like terrible, terrible timing. Now I understand I probably shouldn't be leaving the offices during the playoffs. But hey, when money calls, you got you got to go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it just so happened the week that I was gone was like the most entertaining week. We had like... Kevin Durant put up a master class in game number five, putting up 49 points, and I want to film a video about it, but I'm not home. Terrence Mann has the greatest game of his whole lifetime to win a series, and I'm not home to talk about it. And those are just some of the on-court stuff. Off the court, we have Kimball Walker getting traded. We have coaching vacancies. The Dallas Mavericks, the whole organization is on fire right now. And I will be talking about those things eventually, but today I want to focus on this game seven because we have Milwaukee going into Brooklyn and they win in OT. You know, game sevens can be hit or miss. Obviously, every NBA fan out there loves a game seven, unless you're a fan of the team that's involved because the anxiety is an all-time high. But everybody else loves a good game seven. But I feel like, if, if I don't got the numbers to back it up. Y'all know we don't look at numbers on the recap. I don't, I don't care that much. But I feel like a lot of game sevens don't live up to the actual hype. Like, even earlier in this playoff run, we had Dallas versus the Clippers, and that was a good game for, like, three quarters, and then the Clippers pulled away, and we didn't have, like, that super, super intensity. This one was that <laughs> greatest game of the season? Possibly. We had Kevin Durant dropping 48. Giannis showcasing why he is a two-time MVP. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to accept any Giannis slander, bro. I've been on this island, bro. I understand he's not the guy that's going to take the game winning three like Kevin Durant will be able to do. You know, that's why he has other teammates. But this guy dominated. He had a couple stretches where, like, he was super fatigued. And we're going to talk about fatigue because at the end of the day, there are two things that really determine the series. And fatigue was one of them. He was fatigued throughout this one. You would have loved to see him guard Kevin Durant sometime. You know, sometime. Especially if Kevin Durant putting up uh, 49 in game seven and 48 tonight. You would have loved to see that, but you didn't. You know what I'm saying? But overall, Giannis was amazing. He didn't hit the game-winning shot. He didn't hit the icing on the cake like Cash Money Chris did. But he was clutch. He was amazing tonight. So stop it. You know what I'm saying? It's respect the greatness of these players, bro. And I'm always going to be on that. That's where Giannis, that's where Kevin Durant, that's what all of the superstar players in the league, man. Because we cannot take these for granted. Because, like, like overall careers are, are short in the grand scheme of things. You know what I'm saying? So you got to respect these things. But let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets here. Because Kevin Durant, game number five, game number five puts up a 48 minute game 48 minute game gave us an amazing performance one of the greatest individual performance i've seen in a very very long time especially when it comes to playoff performances amazing and game number six he still played heavy minutes but he didn't have to play every second of the game because milwaukee won that one convincingly right and then we get to this game and it is a game seven so steve nash is like hey i don't trust nobody else <laughs> i don't trust nobody more than i trust kevin or more than i trust james harden on one leg so these guys got to play james harden was one second away from playing the entire game and that was like an inbound play where nicholas claxton came in to guard the inbounder but like you don't trust nobody more than that and then he he goes into the fourth quarter he hits one of the craziest shots to send it to overtime one of the if this man was a size 15 and a half instead of a size 16 they're in the conference finals right now but his toe is on the line cool and I, i'm watching this game and I'm being honest with you, I don't care who actually wins the game, but I'm pulling for the Milwaukee Bucks because I want the smaller market. I want the organic team to have some type of... I just think it's better for the league that way. You know what I'm saying? If the Brooklyn Nets win this game, I'm not punching the walls. I'm not mad or anything because there are players on this team that I absolutely love, but I was rooting for the Milwaukee Bucks just a little bit more, right? So they go to overtime, and in my mind... After what just happened, Coach Coach Bud just has an out of timeout play when they have two and a half seconds on the shot clock, and he draws up. I don't even know. <laughs> and Brooke Lopez has a J.R. Smith moment, and I'm like, this game is over. That's all the momentum swinging, and then Kevin Durant just hit the shot to send it to overtime. I thought this game was completely over, but shout out to again the Bucks from weathering the storm. But the Brooklyn Nets at the end of the day was they were fatigued as a team. Kevin Durant shoots, what, 0 for 6 in overtime. He scores, like, two total points, 1 for 6 and two total points. And, and the team scored two points. They were fatigued. They were really, really fatigued out there. And they had, they finished with zero bench production. Now, I understand as a collective, as a bench, they had 18 minutes. Uh, Jeff Green, who had an amazing game five, didn't do anything but commit three fouls. Um, Landry Shaman was out there doing some cardio for seven minutes. And then the Nicholas Klax at the one second on the inbounds. And Kevin Durant couldn't do it all, man. James Harden is playing on one leg. And I know he ended up with 10 free throws. I think seven of those were in the first quarter, so he kind of cooled down there. But, like, this is crazy to say, but when James Harden was attempting shots, I was looking at it like, I'm okay with that right now. 
Because since he's come back from his injury, we know he's not 100%. He hasn't shot the ball well at all. Like, he has had good moments being being a threat. James Harden being on the court himself is a threat. You have to guard it, whether he has one leg or not. But, like, as, as I'm watching these games, I'm like, him taking that normal step back that he took for the last decade, I'm cool with that because he ain't got his legs under him. You know what I'm saying? So you you don't really worry about that. Bruce Brown had an amazing performance. I'm giving him all the credit. Um, my guy Nick made a whole video about uh, the type. Bruce Brown's the type of guy that every championship team needs. Um, he almost did the thing. Like like late in this game, they had so many offensive rebounds, and a lot of that was Bruce Brown. He had a Joe Harris offensive rebound, but Joe Harris, regular season, um, greatest three point shooter in the league. Like not even close. Mark Smith. This series, god-awful. God-awful. And it's just one of those things, man. Because you can't take him out of the game because he is so much of a threat. You have to guard him. So Steve Nash is trusting in his guy because we know this guy is one of the greatest shooters in the league, right? So it's like this weird thing here. Uh, Blake Griffin had a solid game, but it just wasn't enough. We get to overtime. Cash Money Chris hit some shots. Drew Holiday didn't have not, did not have a good series at all offensively, but he had moments in that fourth quarter. I think he ended up with like eight or ten points in the fourth quarter alone, and that was absolutely huge. Uh, you could credit his defense to some of the James Harden things. And I, I swear to you, bro, I made a tweet like, man, if, if they end up losing this game, Coach Bud got to walk home, bro. And somebody showed a screenshot. Walking from Brooklyn to Milwaukee is like a 10-day thing. He would have had to do that, bro. Because I'm sorry, like, I understand they're in the conference finals now. This is the, the best they've been. You know what I'm saying? They always have been a second round exit, second round exit. They got to the conference finals, which is amazing. It's big. But I can't help but to look at the way Coach Bud is coaching this team and be like, bro, they could be so much better. How do you get a timeout late in the game? <laughs> Two point something seconds on the shot clock and you draw up the play you did. Now, maybe that was Brooke Lopez is not knowing the situation. But, like, if you look at that play, they had two people cut and torch the ball on the inbounder. I don't know what he's doing there. I don't know what he's doing there. And, of course, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. I would have loved to see Giannis get some type of possessions on Kevin Durant. Um, I guess, I mean, it would have been better if they, it got that way. But they, they end up winning this game. Giannis, amazing. P.J. Tucker hitting three threes for P.J. Tucker. If P.J. Tucker's giving you three threes, give him a W. Give the team a W. Because, like, there are some games, this man, P.J. Tucker, just playing great defense. Don't get me wrong, but he's 0 for 2, 0 for 1, zero shot attempts. So when you get a three three-point game from him, that's really, really good. Um, other than the debacle from, from Brooke Lopez, I think he played a solid game. And Chris didn't have a great game, but he, he made timely, timely buckets. And the only bench points we had in this entire game was Pat Connaughton, who had three threes, which were big because, I mean, you had some foul trouble from, like, P.J. Tucker. Um, Drew Holiday was in some foul trouble. So the 23 minutes from Pat Connaughton were really big for the team, man. I'm happy for the Bucks. It's not over. Everybody would say the job's not finished. It's a fact. Job's not finished, you know. They, didn't, they don't want to just be a conference finalist. They want to win it all, and then tomorrow we'll find out who they're going against, and then we'll decide if they're the favorite, if they're going to win this. And then I want Coach Bud out of there. They win a championship. There's no way they fire Coach Bud. They might not even fire Coach Bud if they lose in the next round because, hey, we made it to the conference finals. When, when a team gets eliminated, one of my favorite things to do is to look at their team and be like, okay, what's next? Okay, what's next for the Brooklyn Nets? Honestly, I don't know, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but if James Harden is healthy, Kyrie Irving doesn't mess up his ankle, they win this series easily. You know what I'm saying? Let's be honest with each other. Shout out to the Bucks. Shout out to Giannis. You're in the conference finals right now. But if it wasn't for injuries, you're in, a, you're in the conference finals right now. So when you're looking at this roster, what do they need? They, I think they need a legitimate big that can rebound the ball. Bruce Brown can't be your best rebounder every game. <laughs> every game. And guys like DeAndre Jordan, uh, Nicholas Claxton had good moments throughout the playoffs. Not necessarily in this series, but throughout the playoffs, he, he played pretty solidly. I think they need to figure that out. And... Well, they need to get healthy. They need to figure out the Spencer Dinwiddie situation because um, he is a free agent as well. I've been seeing things of people throwing him in trades to get another piece. Or you just keep him on the team just in case um, James Hardy gets injured again or just in case Kyrie Irving gets injured, injured again. Because you remember when the James Harden trade went down, one of the reasons you do that is for Kyrie Irving insurance. When they traded for James Harden, this is right after Kyrie Irving that took a little hiatus from the team. I mean, some people are like, he's going to retire. We knew he wasn't going to retire. But, like, Kyrie Irving has some injury history. We want to go all in. So, we bring in James Harden. It's just, like, crazy timing that James Harden, who had been an Iron Man for the past half a decade, ends up getting injured here. You know what I'm saying? So, figure out the Spencer Dinwiddie thing. I think you, you're you going to be able to sign players that are trying to ring chase that want to go out there and, and get a championship. So, like, I don't I don't really know what the center market looked like. But you're going to sign somebody for the law. It's a fact. Then we're going to be like, ah. You're going to Brooklyn Nets. But it's crazy how things can happen in the NBA. Feels like 
early season after the James Harden trade, everybody penciled in Lakers. Everybody penciled in Brooklyn Nets. And again, a lot of this is due to injury. And LeBron went on this whole little rant on Twitter about the shortened offseason and how that has impacted the league. And, and I didn't agree with everything LeBron said, but I think he, he's onto something. He's definitely onto something. I think he said like eight All-Stars is, are, are going to miss sometime in the playoffs. That hasn't happened before. You know, that hasn't happened before. So if you're a Brooklyn Nets fan, obviously it sucks to lose in the second round where you have a team of KD, Kyrie, and James Harden. But you're about to get a lot of rest. The season starts at the regular time next year. So Kevin Durant is going to have another year of the offseason behind because you remember, he's just coming off an injury. Another offseason under him. James Harden, I don't expect James Harden to have a major injury again. Again, he has been an Iron Man throughout his entire career, whether he's clubbing or not. And then Kyrie Irving's kind of a wild card when it comes to his injury. But that's the reason you have so many star players is because of that. So let me know what y'all think about this game. I feel like I'm missing, missing some things I should have talked about in this one. But hey, we got another game seven tomorrow. It's already been confirmed that Chris Paul is not playing game one. Uh, Kawhi didn't travel for the first two games of the series. So I don't know what's happening in Phoenix versus Clips. Y'all know who I'm rooting for. But again, I don't really care too much. Y'all know who I'm rooting for. Uh, appreciate y'all. I'll be back tomorrow. It's another game seven. I got to talk about the other game seven. You know what I'm saying? So see you tomorrow.